Good morning, everyone. Um, as Tanya already said, my name is Britta Sutte, and I work together with Philip Lievens at the Ghent University in Belgium. Several studies have already dealt with um, the interplay of cognitive ability and personality, and um, the study that I will present today is titled Cognitive Ability and Personality as Predictors of Academic Performance, Job Performance, and Career Choice of Physicians. Most of the studies that have already dealt with a similar topic have focused on um, cognitive ability and personality as predictors of ac achievement criteria, um, and have focused on the short-term predictive validity. Um, and al also more in general, we see that most admission decisions and most personnel decisions start from the assumption that there exist stable predictor criterion relationships. And this may lead us to um, the following quote by Steele Johnson, which says, in general, the traditional selection paradigm assumes that the rank order of individuals on performance measures remains stable over time, and further, that validity coefficients obtained from the original validation study are also stable over time. And therefore, and also, of course, due to pragmatic reasons, a lot of researchers that um, investigate predictive validity have used a rather short time interval, a time interval of a few months, mostly one or two years, but, however, it might be interesting also to look at a long-term interval because it might be possible that task demands and job demands will change over time, will change after a few years. And this leads us to um, the next quote of the same author, which says, performance requirements may change over time. And as a result of that, researchers have questions whether tests predict performance over the end entire employment period. So this means that predictive validity coefficients may change over time as a result of changing job requirements or changing task requirements. So as I already mentioned before, short-term predictive validity might be only one side of the equation and it might be equally interesting to have a closer look at the long-term predictive validity of the uh, predictors of the selection instruments that we're using. When we have a closer look at the long-term predictive validity of cognitive ability, mixed findings have been reported. So we see that some uh, researchers say that cognitive ability can be considered as a stable predictor over time. Others have found an increase, a slight increase of cognitive ability, uh, at least of the uh, predictive validity of cognitive ability over time. But most studies have found a slight decline of the predictive validity over time. When it comes to non-cognitive predictors, such as personality, research is more scarce, but results are more in line. For example, um, both Cypher et al. and Nevens et al. found uh, an increase of the predictive validity of some uh, personality dimensions over time. Now, the present study aims to focus both at cognitive ability and personality, and we would like to have a closer look at both short-term predictive validity and long-term predictive validity. Therefore, um, the study took place during the, or at least started during the admission exam for medical studies in Belgium, and therefore we included uh, a comprehensive set of criteria. First of all, we looked at uh, academic performance throughout the whole medical curriculum, which takes seven years in Belgium. Second, we also obtained job performance ratings nine years after completing um, the admission exam by the medical students. And last, we also added a more attitudinal variable, which is medical specialty choice of our uh, physician students. So as I already mentioned, the study started <coughs> during the medical and dental studies admission exam in Belgium. And uh, those admission exams are organized on a yearly basis. They're highly standardized, they last for a whole day. Uh, and students have to undergo uh, cognitive ability tests, science tests, um, sometimes uh, interpersonal SGTs, and so on. The passing rate is approximately 30%, and students that pass the exam, they, they receive some kind of certificate that uh, warrants entry into any Belgian university that has a medical program. 
Um, our sample consisted of two cohorts of first-year medical students that started the medical program, and we tried to follow them along the seven years of the uh, medical curriculum. After those seven years, the students in Belgium have to make a decision whether to, they opt for general medicine, so a career as a general practitioner, or whether they opt for a more uh, specialized career path, for example, whether they will specialize in neurology, dermatology, and so on. The predictors that were included in our study were, as I already mentioned, cognitive ability and personality. Our cognitive ability test consisted of verbal, uh, numerical, and abstract items and was spe specifically designed for this purpose and already proved to have good psychometric properties. And we used the Flemish version of the NEO-PR for um, the measurement of personality. Um, we obtained a yearly grade point average of the students, so from year one till year seven, and of course there were some dropouts there. We also obtained information uh, on the career choice of uh, our students. And then finally, 142 students chose for a career as a general practitioner, which meant that they entered um, the general practitioner program, which lasts for approximately two years. And during that program, they worked on, under supervision of a licensed, uh, registered general practitioner, but they themselves had full patient responsibility, and they were also paid as general practitioners. And after those two years, we obtained uh, job performance ratings from the supervisors. When we have a look at our results for cognitive ability, we see that in line with earlier research, there is a slight decline in the predictive validity of cognitive ability. Uh, and more specifically, when we have a look at the earlier years of, academic, of the academic curriculum, of the medical curriculum, we see that cognitive ability is a positive predictor. Those early years are what we call the non-clinical years with a high focus on theoretical and scientific courses. However, when we evolve through the curriculum, there is a shift towards a more clinical focus, and then we see that cognitive ability is no longer a significant predictor of academic performance. Also, when we look at job performance, nine years later, the job performance by general practitioners, we see that cognitive ability, uh, so the, the score on the cognitive ability test taken during the entrance exam or the admission exam is no longer a significant predictor of job performance. These are the results for personality. Um, as was already uh, published um, with partly the same data from Levens et al., we see that there is uh, an increase from, such, from uh, some um, personality dimensions, validity coefficients, such as the light blue curve for conscientiousness, the green curve for openness, and the red curve for extroversion. Now, the red curve actually provides the most extreme example. Uh, when we have a closer look, we see that in the first years of the medical curriculum, extroversion provides a negative predictor of academic performance, which also makes sense as, as students that are more extroverted probably engage in more social activities, which might possibly impair their study time or study activities. However, um, when our curriculum changes and when there's more a focus on the clinical aspects and more interpersonal demands, more patient and colleague interactions, we see that extroversion develops from a negative predictor to a positive predictor of academic performance in the later years of the curriculum. Also, when we have a closer look at the job performance, um, nine years later, we see that extroversion is actually the only significant predictor of job performance, also when we control for cognitive ability in this case. And finally, these are the results for the medical specialty choice. And we found that students that opted for a career as a general practitioner um, mostly had a somewhat lower score on the cognitive ability test during the admission exam, also had a somewhat lower score on conscientiousness and a higher score on agreeableness compared to those students that opted for a more uh, specialized career, a career in more specialized uh, subject of medicine. To conclude, um, we think that our study results uh, clearly show that 
the validity pattern for cognitive ability and the validity pattern for personality varies differently over time and also varies differently according to the criterion of interest, whether that is early on academic performance, whether that is later academic performance, job performance, or the more attitudinal variables such as career choice. Um, and this implies, as I already said before, that we should look both at short-term predictive validity and at long-term predictive validity of the, uh, of the predictors that we're interested in. Um, we can, of course, also derive some more practical implications from uh, our results, from our study. For example, um, the admission exams that are yearly organized, they probably have the goal to identify both competent students, students that make it throughout the whole curriculum, but on the other hand, they also would like to identify competent future physicians. However, our results show that this is quite difficult as some predictors that are very useful to predict the academic performance for good students, for students, are not necessarily the same as the predictors for later job performance. So this is quite challenging to develop a decision key for uh, who passes and who will not pass for those admission exams. And then finally, our study also showed that there are not only cognitively based but also personality based determinants or factors of career choice, of medical specialty choice, and we thought that this might serve as um, an interesting input for career counseling for students to help them choose the direction that fits their needs or interests most. It was very short, I hope I made it <laughs> for the time before. I'd like to thank you for uh, your attention.